think the smartphone industry is in a crisis and no one seems to want to acknowledge it. What I think we accomplished last year in smartphones is we were kind of hitting the limit with what they can do. We're pushing all the functions, we're doing as many things as we can. And now what I've noticed in 2017 is it's no longer about what functional differences you have, now it's all about being the most pretty. LG G6 used to pride itself on the fact that it had a removable battery, modules, and then this year decided that no, if we want people to be interested in our phone, we're gonna have an internal battery, we'll have the waterproofing, and of course, two by one aspect ratio on that display. They showed all these new features that their Android skin can do with a two by one aspect ratio, and it's all about having that very large screen, right, in a small form factor. And then of course, this was taken a whole new level with the infinity display on the Galaxy S8. Everyone's been blown away by the fact that there's barely any bezels, that curved display goes right to the edge, and even though I've been mentioning you can see the chin and forehead, it's the biggest display ratio to form factor we've ever had on a smartphone. Maybe the Mi Mix beat it, but I don't know. People are impressed. And of course with the S8 we have something even larger than a 2 by 1 aspect ratio, because if we look at the smaller resolution on the S8 it's 1440, and the height resolution, not 2880, it's 29. So it's in fact a little more than 2 by 1 which is why when you're watching the previews for the S8, you're seeing footage from Netflix, because Netflix is not shot in 16 by 9, at least the shows they were demoing, like Stranger Things. So it really takes advantage of that big screen, but personally I find it creating a bunch of problems for software developers. Also, how functional is it when you have a phone that's that long and you're trying to use it with one hand? Is there really going to be a point to having all these options at the top of the screen when it's going to be increasingly difficult to reach that far now? And when we watch YouTube videos like you are right now, or record videos with the rear-facing camera, they're going to play back at 16 by 9, leaving giant bezels on the side of the phone anyway. Which essentially means that if you're not watching some premium Netflix show, you're going to have bezels or you're going to have to activate that option that kind of distorts the image a little bit to fit to the screen size. My big question right now is what are we doing here? What is the advantage once you have eliminated bezels other than the fact that it looks cool? One thing that's really annoying me is that when they have this elongated aspect ratio, they can say that the screen is bigger because we measure our displays diagonally. So we can say that the S8 has a 6.2 inch display, but you know, when the angle of that display is more like this, we're just kind of stretching out the height of our phones. We're not really providing more space to work with, we're just creating more space to reach. This of course has me very concerned for the iPhone 8 slash edition, which we all know is rumored to have a 5.8 inch OLED display. What is Apple thinking? One of my theories is that the Galaxy S8 and LG G6 knew that Apple would be doing something like this, elongating the display in favor of thinner bezels, curving the display. So what Samsung and LG were trying to do was get ahead of the curve. They were like, okay, we know what Apple's gonna do. Let's try to top that before it comes out. And in return, they're making Android developers have to optimize things for 16 by nine for all older smartphones and having to optimize them for Samsung's weird aspect ratio, 29 something by 1440, as well as the LG G6, which is a two by one aspect ratio. So now they have a ton of very conflicting screen resolutions to adjust to. My hope is that Apple does something a little more clever than that. And I've mentioned this before, but I really need to emphasize the importance of it. I'm very much hoping that the iPhone 8 slash edition is incorporating a function bar with that added screen space, not necessarily an extended display. This means with the 2017 iPhone that you'll still have a display that is 16 by nine, a viewable one. The stuff you watch videos on, take videos on, that will still remain 16 by nine. That extra 0.3 inches we keep hearing about is where that home button will be removed. The space down there that we now have a chin will be empty, may even have functional buttons that you can customize. And they of course alter from app to app. That's where we have the fingerprint reader built in into the display, but no, we do not have a changed aspect ratio on the next iPhone. Because Apple understands people have been optimizing these things for when did the iPhone 5 came out? Several years now to be 16 by nine and to try to force everyone to change it again to a two by one or whatever would be rather crazy as well as making things very difficult for app developers like Snapchat. Are we going to start sending selfies that are extremely elongated now? When we're browsing certain social media apps, do we have to activate reachability a heck of a lot more often? Phablets are already kind of big. Do we need to make them, you know, longer? Remember when they did release the iPhone 5 and everyone was making fun of, of you know, the super long iPhones because the screen is taller. Now everyone except Apple is doing it and no one's making fun of it. They're just saying, OLED is good, no bezels. That means it's good. Let me ask you something. What great things do you get with the Galaxy S8 without mentioning the display? If we ignore the display, is the S8 really a giant upgrade from the S7? We got USB-C, we got uh, the iris scanner face detection. The face detection can be tricked with a photograph, by the way. So like if you have a picture of the owner of that phone, you can unlock it with that. What else? There's, uh, there's no home button. You can, you can change the uh, backslash multitasking button. Fingerprint reader's been moved to the back. 
um, 64 gigs. And then of course all of this had a price jump. Yes, it looks cool. Yes, you got me there. Having little bezels looks very futuristic, but as soon as you get it, you're going to get used to that in about an hour. And then it's just gonna be a show off thing. Hey, check out my phone, it doesn't have bezels. Okay, that, that's cool. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. What else can it do? That's about it, it doesn't have bezels. Is that a big, was that a big problem you had before? Yes. Okay. All right. That, that's that's good for you. Where do smartphones even go from here? Once we eliminate the bezels entirely, then what are we gonna do? So I'm really really hoping Apple does not conform to this two by one aspect ratio thing. I hope they stick with 16 by nine and use that extra 0.3 inches on the iPhone 8 slash edition to be a function bar with a on screen home button, customizable function buttons, and stuff like that. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.